Okay, so I will uh, begin this um, webinar. Thank you once again to all the attendees for joining us today. Um, this webinar is hosted by Africa Leads Partnership and it is entitled Jobs and Economic Development Impact Assessment Across the Fulu and Energy Sectors Adapting the iJedi Model. My name is Karen Morris. I'm a communications officer at South South North in Cape Town, South Africa, and I'll be the host of this webinar platform. I'd just like to go over a few housekeeping uh, rules before I hand over to our moderator or facilitator. In terms of the general housekeeping for this webinar, the moderator is Tim Reba from NRAO, and he will be introducing the presenters. We will be taking questions after all the presentations have been made. Attendees are asked to submit questions via the Q&A button which should be at the bottom of your Zoom webinar interface. When forwarding a question, please mention the particular presenter to whom you'd like to address the question to. Tim will screen the questions and relay them verbally to the panelists. We'll aim to answer as many questions as possible in the allotted time, and any questions we can't answer live will be answered in writing following the event. We'd like to note that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared after the webinar um, via the AFLP. So please con share, consider sharing it with anyone you may know who would like to view it but couldn't attend today. With that, I'd like to hand over to Tim. Great, thank you very much. Let me um, go ahead and share my screen here. Um, can you all see this? Yes, uh, it's all clear from okay. our side. Great. Um, well, thank you very much. Good uh, again. Good afternoon uh, to uh, to all of our attendees. Thanks for joining us. Good morning from uh, from Colorado. Um, my name is Tim Reaver with the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Uh, I'll be facilitating, moderating the webinar. Um, today we're going to be talking about the International Jobs and Economic Assessment uh, um, and adapting uh, that to tool for uh, a full loop. Um, so real quick, um, just a, sort of a, a quick agenda for, for the webinar today. Um, I'll be providing a very short uh, kickoff and, and welcome, probably just about five minutes or so. Um, then we're, we're lucky to have uh, David Kaiser, uh, who also sits here at NRL, uh, and developed the iJedi tool with us today. He's going to be talking about uh, the background of his capability in order to adapt it for a FOLU. Um, and so we're fortunate to be Francis Yamba from the Center for Energy, Environment, and Engineering in Zambia, uh, who's going to be that sees uh, in Zambia have had, uh, using our Jedi over the past, the past couple of years. Um, and then finally, most importantly, um, we have a discussion here. Uh, so as I mentioned, please, uh, please do go ahead and feel free to ask any chat box. And that chat box, you can, you can see at the bottom of your screen there. Um, I'll be sort of collecting those questions uh, as we go through the webinar. Um, so that we'll, we can make sure to try and uh, get as many of those addressed um, as possible. So um, without any uh, further ado, just a little bit of background on the Apolu community of practice. Um, beauty of practice is, is pretty new. Um, it was launched just in April uh, of 2018. I think um, perhaps many of you uh, who joined us today were also part of that initial launch. Um, it's really designed to be an interactive uh, platform and network uh, of institutions to look at the sort of the technical and policy challenges uh, and more importantly solutions and sharing of those solutions uh, specifically targeted at the Apolu sector um, uh, across Africa. Um, there's four main, uh, main activities of, uh, of the Apolu community of practice. Um, first of all, facilitating peer-to-peer -peer exchange and collaboration, um, providing demand-driven technical training. Um, what the community practice does is really improve it, but the members respond to your needs. Um, sharing best practices, tools, resources, and studies very much the webinar 
uh, we're, we're, we're uh, engaged in today to talk about the iJedi tool. Um, and then finally, and most importantly, um, really to serve as a platform to help foster champion institutes um, like those that all of you belong to, um, to carry on and really drive the work of the community of practice. Um, there's, a, there's several initial topical priorities uh, for the community of practice um, that were decided uh, amongst the community members. Um, agroforestry action uh, as a driver of socioeconomic development and emission reductions. Um, in addition to agroforestry, also linking agricultural production with sustainable energy sources. Um, taking analytical approaches and developing analytical tools uh, to help us reduction potential as well as the socioeconomic development potential of these actions both agroforestry and, and agri agricultural production and energy um, and finally translating results of that analysis to policy policies uh, and actions um, for all of us in our organizations to uh, to move forward and take some actions on uh, on these uh, these LEDs activities um, you'll notice there's sort of a common theme here um, across all of these topical priorities and that's really um, the intersection between socioeconomic development and emissions reduction for these less, less strategies. And that's the one thing that really, um, really is a common thread throughout uh, that links all of this. And that's, I think, why we're, we're here today with the topic of how do we assess some of the socioeconomic uh, impacts uh, along with the greenhouse gas reduction impacts of lead strategies. So as Karen mentioned, um, uh, at this end is part of the Africa Led Partnership as a secretary for the Africa Led Partnership. Um, in addition to being engaged in, uh, in activities like the Apolo Community of Practice, the FLP does a lot of other uh, activities related to deliver uh, technical assistance to serve as that platform um, to help uh, facilitate uh, collaboration and knowledge sharing. Um, one of the projects uh, that I think probably most folks are, are pretty familiar with here. Um, is the Africa LEDs project. Uh, this was sort of the precursor to the Polu community of practice. Um, real quickly, so this project uh, funded initially by the European Commission um, and is a partnership across several organizations, uh, including the UN Environment Program, uh, KNUST, uh, the LEDs GP, of course, the Africa LEDs partnership, and of course, uh, the Polu community of practice. Um, there's really two objectives to this project. Um, the first is to lay groundwork for successful LEDs and NDC implementation. Um, and that's done in twofold way. First is supporting uh, lead planning processes, uh, again, really with a, a, an aim to achieving both socioeconomic and climate goals simultaneously. Um, and secondly, and that's where the webinar we're at today uh, feeds in, um, is providing support for lead modeling uh, and analysis to provide the data, to provide the analytical backing to really inform these decisions and investments in lead um, so that uh, policy and decision makers are equipped with the best tools possible and best information possible uh, to, make, uh, to make wise decisions. Um, and the second objective, of course, then, is to, to share this, uh, this knowledge developed across the, the wider uh, African region through uh, activities just like the Apolu uh, COP that we're in today. The project started uh, with eight initial uh, countries, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, the, the DRC, Ghana, Kenya, Morocco, Mozambique, and Zambia. Um, so it uh, focuses first on, on supporting those eight countries um, and then sharing lessons uh, across and beyond those eight countries uh, once those, uh, those lessons are established. But for those of you who may not be, uh, be uh, engaged right now in the, the Africa-led project, if you're not, um, there's also uh, the remote expert assistance for LEDs platform that's, uh, that's managed by the Africa LEDs partnership as well as the LEDs global partnership. Um, this, uh, this service is really available to anybody. Um, it provides no cost on demand technical assistance uh, available primarily to governments uh, and their uh, stakeholders to assist with a wide range uh, of LEDs uh, planning policy and, and, uh, and technical questions. Um, you can reach out to us, uh, you reach out to the Africa LEDs Partnership, reach out to the LEDs Global Partnership, um, and we'll connect uh, you with uh, one of 90, over 90 experts from around the world um, who really have specialized expertise in a lot of the LEDs processes. Um, some of our experts who are on the, on the webinar today um, to provide up to uh, 40 hours of absolutely free, custom tailored uh, technical assistance on, on LEDs planning and or implementation. Um, so we really encourage you to use that. Um, as I mentioned, it's available to government actors and representatives, as well as to um, consultants, NGOs, and other technical institutions um, who represent governments. Um, as I mentioned, um, there's a multitude of ways to access this real service. Um, you can reach out to the, the Africa-led partnership. 
um, at South South North. You can reach out to the LEDS GP um, here at NREL. You can visit us online um, and, of course, through the communities of practice like this one or through the various LEDS working groups, um, you, can, uh, you can reach out. But again, um, I really do encourage all of you to, uh, to take advantage of, uh, of this service. So um, with the obligatory uh, plug uh, complete, uh, I just wanted to touch a little bit on what exactly we're here, um, here for today. Um, you know, socioeconomic impact analysis is an incredibly critical uh, step in the lead process. Um, you know, it's because LEDs are really driven by development goals. They're not there uh, just to serve their own their own need. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's really about how do we link these socioeconomic development goals together with greenhouse gas and emissions reductions. Um, the question of jobs and economic growth, um, you know, there's certainly uh, critical factors as well as, as political buzzwords that really drive support from the public. From, from decision makers to invest in and really back uh, and throw their weight behind uh, lead activities and investments. Um, and again, that's why it's, it's critically important that we have the best information and best analytical tools available at our disposal um, so that we can, we can make sure uh, we're equipped with that information. Um, for these reasons, um, NREL developed the Jobs and Economic Development Impact Tool. Um, you can, can read a little bit about it here, but instead of hearing about it from me, um, as I mentioned, we're, we're fortunate to have David Kaiser, who is, a, who is the iJedi expert and lead developer here at NREL, um, uh, to, to talk about uh, the iJedi tool and, and walk us through it. So um, I think at this point, I will uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, and hand it off to, uh, to David. Uh, and again, real quick before I do, um, as we're going through this, again, just remember um, that, that chat button uh, at the bottom of your screen for questions as they pop up. I'll be, I'll be collecting those as, as David and then Professor Yambo go through their presentations and we'll, uh, we'll get to them at the end. So um, yeah, without any further ado, I'll uh, go ahead and hand it over to David. Screen is being shared here. Um, yep, got it, perfect, thank you. Okay, it's coming through, okay, great. Uh, and, and can you hear me, Tim? Yeah, we got gotcha. you. Okay, fantastic. So what I want to do today is I'll go uh, over uh, the Jobs and Economic Development, or JEDI suite of models. Um, I'll talk about a little bit about the history, his, history of the model development here in the U.S. Um, and then I'll go into the International Jobs and Economic Development Impact Model, or iJedi. Uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about what it is that we're doing in the future to expand uh, model capabilities. So the jobs and economic development, so the JEDI model was originally uh, developed about 14 years ago uh, in the U.S. because uh, for the reasons Tim mentioned, uh, it was difficult to estimate economic impacts from renewable energy projects. Um, and we wanted to uh, make a model that was uh, useful for experts, but also approachable for the public in general. And uh, so it began with wind and solar and is expanded in the U.S. to uh, energy projects in general. Uh, the iJedi tool followed uh, for similar reasons. We wanted to expand it uh, to uh, LEDs countries. Um, and so initially that was Zambia, Mexico, Colombia, South Africa, and the Philippines were adding Kenya to that and um, you can enter in, uh, if you have appropriate economic data, you can use this model for any country. It's flexible. Um, we have an efficiency model in development and I'll talk about that at the end. Um, and one uh, uh, exciting development is that we will, we're uh, in the process of making a web-based iJedi tool so you won't have to download the Excel version. You can use it whether you have Excel or not. So uh, stay tuned. The way that uh, JEDI um, depicts scenarios is in terms of expenditures and where those expenditures are made. Um, so if you have manufacturing of components in your country, you would list what you're spending on the manufacturing and then the percentage of where that manufacturing occurs. So if it's 100%, all in your country, you would say 100%. If it's none, then you would say zero. Um, we do offer some default expenditure data and local content data that's based on, you know, a lot of different data sources. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, 
but it's kind of generalized. And so we do encourage people if they have better information to enter it manually. Um, and uh, we'd love to hear when we're wrong. So if you have um, better data or you have feedback, positive or negative, uh, please let us know. The general support email address is jedisupport at nrel.gov. Um, we'll also answer questions that are sent to that address. So uh, it's useful or you can email me directly. Um, my email address I'll give you at the end. Um, and as I mentioned, these models are, the um, model is country specific to the, mo the countries that are in the model, but if you have your own data, you can enter in custom region and you can enter that and uh, uh, run analysis for any country. Right now, the model is set up to use wind, solar, biopower, and geothermal. Um, and um, we have plans to expand that to efficiency. Again, I'll talk about that at the end. Um, and then the model results, these are gross right now. These are gross, not net. So what this means is, uh, let's think about this from a jobs perspective for a project when it gives you jobs numbers This is really the workforce that's needed to develop and operate the project. It's not um, Well, I'll talk about the limitations in a moment, but it's not looking at you know economy-wide impacts It's not saying you know if if we have utility rate increases maybe we have declined someplace else or you know we're putting in a solar plant and displacing a coal plant and so what what are the impacts from you know solar versus coal? It's not looking at that. It's only looking at the project that's being analyzed. Um, and then one nice thing about iJedi is that there is a general tab, and so you can go to that and you can estimate impacts from any project. It doesn't have to be an energy project. You just enter in expenditures in any industry, and um, and uh, it will show those. Okay. <clears throat> the methodology that iJedi uses is an input output or IO model that basically what an IO model does is it's an economy wide model that captures interactions between industries and households. So everything that an industry produces is purchased by another industry or it's imported or exported or something like that. So, you know, you can think about um, manufacturing a, a generator. Uh, generators need copper. And so for that generator manufacturer, you're buying copper and that copper is either imported or it's produced by another manufacturer in the economy. And so those relationships are captured. And then that manufacturer may be earning some profit, they're paying taxes, they're paying money to their workers. So that relationship is captured. And then those workers in turn, um, they're considered households. So the households go out and they spend money in the local economy. And the money that they spend is also uh, so, so when they buy something, it's also produced by another industry. So if you buy food, that uh, contributes money to the agriculture sector. You're buying something that's produced by the agriculture sector. You're buying uh, something, you're paying money to retail establishments. And so all of those things are captured in the model. Um, and um, it, it's also important to say that this is widely accepted. It's a widely used methodology. It's um, a, a developer, the original creator, Leon Tiff, he won the Nobel Prize in large part because of uh, the development of this methodology. And so it is something that's uh, very common. The data sets that this model uses are um, all over the place uh, because there are different countries, there are different things that are included. Um, the main data set comes from the OECD. Um, that's the input output data. That's for most of the countries that are in the model, except for Zambia and Kenya. Uh, the Zambia economic data comes from the International Food Policy Research Institute, and the Kenya IO data comes from uh, KGM and Associates. Uh, so that's the input output data. The labor data uh, comes from country specific statistical agencies. And so um, every single country that's in the model, uh, primarily uh, labor data comes from that country. So Zambia labor data comes from Zambia. Um, 
Columbia labor, labor data comes from Columbia and so forth. Uh, and then in the default data, that's where the default cost and local content comes from. Um, you can go to that default data tab and you can go through there and look at the default data for, and it's organized by technology. And they all have, um, they all cite the sources that they use and most of them actually link back to those sources so that you can go in there and you can see where it came from for the most part. Uh, I think some of it is proprietary but um, it still cites that information so that you know that we're not just making these things up. <clears throat> the results that JEDI produces, they are four different metrics. Um, the first, and I think probably the one that most people are interested in are jobs. And jobs, uh, they're fairly simple. These are just the number of workers that are tracked by each government statistical agency. And the definition of what a job is depends on each government statistical agency. The earnings metric, this is wage, wages and uh, uh, employer provided benefits. Um, at a basic sense, you can think of this as payroll. So from a company perspective, this is what you are paying for your workers. Uh, the next metric, uh, which I also think is, is quite important, is value added, which is the same thing as gross, dometric, gross domestic product. And um, GDP, I think most of you hear this commonly in the news or other sources where they're talking about general health of the economy. So GDP is really a common metric that's uh, the general health of the economy. Um, uh, people call this a value of production. That's why it's called value added. Um, and uh, basically this includes uh, payments to workers. It includes property type income and then taxes paid less subsidies. Uh, property type income, basically what this is, you can think of this, it includes uh, profit, uh, you know, capital income, uh, things like that. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's payments to the owners of the, of the uh, company. And then output is just a general metric. Um, it's overall economic activity. So at the business level, you can think of this as revenue. Um, you know, if you own a business, revenue, you know, you, that's the money that you're taking in, but it's not necessarily the amount of money that you keep because you still have to pay for the inputs that you're using as a business, you have to pay rent, you have to pay your workers. And so it's uh, just a general number of economic activity. And then there are three types of results that the iJedi and Jedi models produce. The first uh, in, in iJedi is direct. And this is uh, immediate expenditures. So, you know, going back to the example that I gave, if you're buying a generator, this is the payments that you're making to that generator manufacturer. These are the jobs at that generator manufacturer and what they earn and what that manufacturer contributes to the economy. The next type of impact is indirect. So this manufacturer, this manufacturer has to buy inputs. So, you know, for example, they might be buying something from natural resource suppliers. They might be buying consulting services. And so this is really, um, uh, you might have heard this as the ripple effect throughout the economy. So this is, that, so this is the generalized um, supply chain in industries within an economy. And it's important to remember in iJedi, this is solely within that country's economy. And the next type of result is induced. So these direct industries, these indirect industries, they're all paying money to their workers. And those workers in turn are going out and spending money within that economy. So these are payments to, maybe they're making payments to retail establishments. Maybe they're making payments for healthcare or education. Um, so these are all the induced type of impacts. 
Now I'll show you an example of iJedi inputs. And this is the model that's currently available that you can download. Um, uh, basically what they are are expenditures. There are some other general inputs. You have to input what country you're using, whether it's a country that's in the model or a country that uh, you're customizing, you have to specify that. Um, for each project, you need to specify the size of the project and then the year of um, uh, the currency year. Uh, iJedi is in um, US dollars. And so you'll need to convert, if you're thinking about local currency, you would need to convert that to US dollars. If you have questions about that, um, please, again, just let us know. I, the uh, Jedi support at nrl.gov or, or my email address at the end is david.kaiser at nrl.gov. Again, that'll be a part of this uh, uh, slideshow, so you can refer back to that if need be. Um, and so going on down, you can see that um, there's a button that says update with wind defaults. You can click that and it will update all of the information, uh, cost and local content to what is the default in the model. You have to have macros enabled to do that. If you don't have macros enabled, that's fine. It just won't work. Um, and then going down, you can see the expenditure information. And so in this example, this is for land-based wind. You can see uh, the cost for turbine, blades, towers, um, and other equipment, shipping and transportation. Um, and then you can see the percentage that's manufactured or purchased. Um, this is extremely, the, the local content information, the percent that's manufactured or purchased, and purchased, that's extremely important because the model is going to be sensitive to that. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Um, but it could, you could uh, significantly skew results if those local content percentages are too high. But again, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so there's the equipment, there's the basic uh, construction uh, it, information, um, and then a section for other. So each one of these is going to be different. Um, the similarities between all of the electrical projects is that you have a construction section and then you have an operations and maintenance or O&M section. But both are still, um, ex the, both are still expenditures and both are still a uh, percentage that's uh, a percentage of those expenditures that are made within um, country. And then you can see sample results. And these results, you can see, are split out by the direct, indirect, induced um, types that I talked about, and then the jobs, earnings, output, and uh, GDP, or value-added metrics that I talked about. And so for this, you can see it's saying that for a 500 megawatt wind plant, you have uh, 17, 17,464 jobs. Um, 85 million earnings, 304 million GDP, and so on. And then for the O&M, you can see 59 ongoing jobs. And again, it's important to, to uh, recognize that this is sensitive to cost assumptions and sensitive to uh, assumptions about local content, and especially that local content number. And the reason why it's so sensitive to that local content number is that, um, uh, you know, that, that expenditure is made up of um, payments for inputs and then payments to workers, the gross operating surplus, and taxes. And so in one country, those payments, profitability, and taxes are going to be very different than they are in another country. You know, so for, uh, so for, you know, think about a wind component, uh, a wind blade that's manufactured in uh, Germany is going to have diff different costs for inputs, uh, different costs for labor than um, if you manufactured that wind blade in uh, Mexico. So for a project, you would definitely want to make sure that those percentages are, uh, are accurate.
And the iJedi model uh, differs from the US Jedi models in that it breaks down impacts by industry. So you can use the generalized ones or you can break them out by industry. And so you can see here, we've got construction phase. It still has a direct, indirect and induced number, um, but it splits it out by um, where those uh, impacts are actually accruing, which is I think very useful information because instead of just a generalized number, you know where those numbers might be. And then getting um, to the results and um, limitations. Uh, during the construction phase of the model, remember the model is split up between construction and O&M. Those construction phase impacts are uh, uh, the equivalent of, single, of a single year. So for example, if it says 100 jobs, but the project actually takes two years, then that's the equivalent of an average of 50 jobs per year. So that 100 job number in this example, that's the equivalent of one year. And so you would divide it by the number of years. And then again, as I mentioned, these models are country specific. Um, so if you say that your scenario is in Colombia, then those impacts are just in Colombia. Or you say Zambia, those impacts are just in Zambia. Um, the other thing is that um, input output models in general assume that results are linear and fixed. And basically that's a fancy way of saying that we're assuming that everything in the economy, it's, it's just a snapshot. And it assumes that all inputs are going to be available uh, at the same price, um, regardless of how much of those inputs you, regardless of how much of those inputs that you buy. Um, it also assumes, um, when I say prices are fixed, one of those, um, quote, prices is also taxes. And so it assumes taxes are fixed. Um, it would assume things like utility rates are fixed and that the relationships between industries in terms of uh, purchases are also uh, the same. So for one industry, if that industry produces a basket of goods, it's gonna produce that same basket of goods, use that same recipe for production regardless of uh, production level. And then um, models don't account for feasibility or profitability. <clears throat> okay. And I'm going back here, my, my little chat button. I don't always see that, but I see that it's blinking now. And someone asked, do these figures take into account economies of scale? Which is a great question. And the answer to that is no. Um, input output models do not take into account economies of scale. Now for the default data, that's something that we're actually working on. Right now, for the most part, except for I think geothermal, these, um, uh, the default data are basically, they scale up and down and, that, and that's linear. Um, again, again, I don't think the geothermal default data does that because there are certain assumptions about um, uh, uh, drilling that differ based on the depth of, of the, of the uh, well and um, that go over the depth of the well and uh, other other factors, but that is something that we'd like to change, but um, that's something that we haven't um, incorporated quite yet. And then uh, C's asked to go over the slide of results and general impacts. And were those outputs from the scenario being presented or were they from a different scenario? The answer is those are, those were impacts uh, from, from that scenario. So these were impacts from that scenario, the 500 megawatt wind project. Um, so those are from that 500 megawatt wind project. And then we have another question. Uh, since the model, I hope that answers the question um, from Fiona and sees, if not, please, um, put in another comment. Uh, we have another question. Since the model is country specific, does it mean 
uh, it can't be used for a regional project. And the answer for that is you can use that for a regional project. What you would have to do is you would have to take the input output data um, and aggregate it. So if you have data for one country, uh, this, this can get complicated. You would want to have the same format for both countries, but you would basically uh, take the basic input output data, which is called the social accounting data, and you would add them together. They come as a matrix and you would just add those two matrices together. Um, this gets kind of complicated. Uh, if this is a specific project, um, I think we could probably talk about this. Um, we could probably talk about this outside of the webinar, but you know, I'm, blabbering. The basic answer here is yes, you can use it for a regional project. Okay, and thanks for the questions. These are fantastic questions. Um, now, the iJedi efficiency model, this is something that I mentioned earlier in the, in the presentation. This is currently in development. Um, one of the big differences in this model versus the other JEDI models is that these results are net and not gross. So instead of just say in the iJedi model, we're looking at a workforce that is supported by a project. In this case, we look at increases in the economy and decreases in the economy. And so we're, the model looks at existing activity and um, I'll give an example in um, the next slide. So it accounts for existing activity and then it accounts for changes. And you know that those changes might be expenditures for something and um, they might be ongoing, say, savings for a household. Uh, and again, I'll give an example in the, in the next slide. So these expenditures might be one time and they might be ongoing. So similar to the iJedi model construction versus O&M, this one has one time and then it has ongoing. And then here's an example from that. Um, in this case, we're looking at um, changes from say charcoal cook stoves to electric stoves. And so in this example, um, we have um, increases in electricity expenditures. Um, you might have a single event where you are purchasing appliances. And then uh, on an ongoing basis though, uh, there's decreases in expenditures for charcoal. And so there's going to be a decline in the charcoal industry, or at least um, it will, it will um, uh, stop prevent growth in the charcoal industry, I guess. The charcoal industry may not grow as quickly or it could decline. And so because these are net, they could be negative or they could be positive. Um, in either case, you would want to think about these results in the context of what it is that you're actually getting from the scenario. And so you might have a negative impact, but then at the same time, you might have that negative impact because you're decreasing um, local emissions uh, like fine matter particulates or decreasing greenhouse gas. And so that might be a benefit even though impacts from the model are, uh, could be negative. It, it really could go either way, it depends on the scenario. And here's an example from a scenario. Um, I have to apologize, I don't have model inputs here. Uh, this is just an example of what outputs could be. Um, actually, I don't have an example for inputs because it's in development. We don't necessarily have what the inputs are going to be uh, finalized and we don't have numbers yet. So this is entirely made up data. Um, and so for this scenario, you can see where we have those negative numbers. Um, so there might be uh, direct impacts that are positive. In this case, we have indirect impacts that are on net. These are negative. Um, and then the induced impacts are positive. A lot of times for these scenarios, you might see positive induced impacts because uh, households might be saving money on electricity expenditures. In this case, the indirect are probably negative because um, it, it, you know, you're not spending as, maybe you're not spending as much on um, 
maybe you're not spending as much on uh, you know, coal. It just depends. And again, this scenario is entirely made up. It just gives you an example of how some impacts might be positive and some impacts might be uh, negative. Um, and if you have questions about that, do please enter something in the uh, chat box. Uh, this is in development though. And one of the reasons that we're doing this is because a lot of the feedback that we have gotten from the iJedi model has been, you know, we want this to be, uh, we want to know positives, but we also want to know negatives. Let's be realistic here. This is an economic development plan. Um, we need to know how this is really going to affect the economy. And then more future work that we're working on. We're working on linking um, iJedi with the Long Range Energy Alternatives Planning System model, or LEAP. Um, and then LEAP gives you a lot more information about those uh, things outside of JEDI that I mentioned, uh, like gas emissions. It also allows you to, it also would allow you to, instead of developing a scenario in JEDI, develop a scenario in LEAP. And then JEDI would interpret that scenario to develop impacts. Um, so we're really in the early phases of this work, but it is something that is uh, pretty, pretty exciting. So thank you for your time. Thank you for the great questions. If you have any other questions, please do ask. Um, here's my email address. It's david.kaiser at nrel.gov. So if you do have questions to follow up, uh, please email me or uh, Jedi support at nrel.gov. With that, uh, thank you. I'll hand it back to Tim if there are no other questions. Fantastic. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, David. I think that was great. To, great overview and really helpful um, introduction of, uh, of where I Jedi has been and, uh, and uh, where it's going. Um, to, uh, to all of our attendees, um, thanks for the questions. Please do keep them coming in. Um, you, can, you can go ahead and ask them in that chat box um, or also ask them in the Q&A uh, button down there at the bottom of your screen. Um, we're gonna hand it over here to uh, Professor Francis Yamba from SEAS in just a second. But first, David, there was one question I think it makes sense to touch on um, now while it's fresh. Um, and that was how often the default data for iJedi is updated. Maybe you could just uh, touch on touch on that and touch on the default data real quick. Essentially, depends on um, funding on our end and how quickly technologies change. So I can't give give you uh, one specific answer. I just say. Um, periodically, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, 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 periodically is technically true, but in practice worthless. And so I apologize for the vagueness, but uh, uh, I can't give a specific answer for that. No, no problem. Thank you. Uh, thanks for that much. And um, we can have a little bit of a conversation um, at the end during the discussion about the importance of data and, and you know, what kind of data data we need and what you all um, through the community of practice can, can do with that. Yes. Um, so with that, sorry, go ahead. No, and, and again, I'd like to reiterate that if you see something fishy in the model, please, please email us. We'd love to hear when we're wrong. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, thank you. Um, if you have more questions for David or on iJedi, again, please uh, do not be shy. There are no, no foolish questions. Um, with that, we're gonna go, going to go ahead and hand it over to Steve now in Zambia to share some of their experiences. Um, I think we're actually going to start off um, with Nancy from Seas, who will, who will kick things off uh, for us. So, um, Nancy, uh, you, uh, you have the floor. Can you, um, is your, uh, is your audio working, Nancy? I need to make sure you're unmuted.
Nancy, can you um, can you hear us? Um, just uh, shoot us a message in the text box if you're able to to hear us. Okay, that's good. Um, at, least, at least she can hear us. Sorry, sorry, folks, for the delay here. Just give us uh, one second while we, we sort through some technical issues here. Um, so, Nancy, I'm not sure if you're on your your uh, computer microphone or on your um, called in with a with the telephone. Um, you're unmuted on our side, so please just uh, just make sure you're unmuted um, on your side. Can you try sharing your screen? I don't know if you have slides. Let's see if that much is working. If you go down to the, the bottom of your uh, your screen there, there should be in the bottom left-hand corner a little, uh, a little button with a telephone um, or a microphone, and you can make sure that you're, uh, you're set to either your computer speaker and microphone or to your telephone as needed. Um, and also make sure to click that to make yourself up to YouTube. Well, while we wait for that, um, we might hear from uh, from some of our colleagues at uh, at SSN who uh, can tell us a little bit about the Africa-led partnership uh, in a bit more detail and some of the work work they do while um, while we try to uh, try to get C's up and running here. So, um, if uh, it's okay, Jesse, maybe I'll hand it back to you. Oh, wait, hello, oh. hello, hello. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. We have you. Glad. Glad we worked that out. Um, thank you. Fantastic. Um, so, if you want to try sharing your screen, there should be a little button down there at the bottom center that says "Share Screen" as well. I don't know if you have slides to go over, or if you just uh, just want to uh, want to talk through it. But the floor is yours. Uh, I can't seem to see the the option to share my screen. No, there should be a little a little square with an arrow right down there in the bottom center. Otherwise, you can uh, you can just uh, email me your slides real quick, and I'll be happy to share them through mine. Okay, let me do just that. Um, Tim, what's your email address? Uh, it's just tim.reber at nrel.gov. Okay, got it. Sorry for the delay again, everyone. We'll be, uh, be back at it here in just Second. In the meantime, Nancy, um, if you want to um, just go ahead and start maybe with a quick introduction of uh, yourself and, and see and I'll get the slides uh, up and running just as soon as they come through. Okay, um, my name is Anansi Serenje Ngoma. I'm um, uh, representing the Center for Energy, Environment and Engineering Zambia. I'm the center coordinator here. And um, since 2014, I have been working um, on, on, on the DIA2 and also um, getting knowledge of the IJDI um, with assistance from NREL. So we used the, the DIA2 and the, I, the, the JDI Zambia uh, to prepare some of our documents, our country documents, 
the numbers and we also used the the tool and the model to prepare the ndc uh, so currently for this project um, we have some um, we have some projects under the ndc that have been selected for this um, under energy we have some off-grid um, of grid uh, projects that were selected for mini hydro, um, solar PV and wind, and also for switching of fuel from isolated diesel to mini hydro, uh, which have been considered under energy. And then we have a Apollo um, uh, projects, uh, which are two of them, uh, forest enhancement, which is forest regeneration and also conservation agriculture. So uh, with technical assistance from NREL and other partners, um, we have started the project and hope to get um, some technical backstopping from, from NREL, which they have agreed to offer us upon demand. And um, their assistance comes to complement the efforts that we have already as a country uh, to bridge specific technical, um, technological and tactical gaps. So um, the- Hi, Nancy, Tim, sorry, just to jump in real quick. Did you, did you send those slides through? I'm still trying to get them up as soon as they, um, they come through. Oh, sorry, just one second. Okay. Okay, just uh, let me know when to click ahead. Nancy, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, you should be seeing your slides okay. now, so uh, just let me let me know when to go yes, ahead. I, I, yes, please. Um, I think I was uh, about to start um, slide four, no, slide three, sorry. Slide three. Yes, um, so um, I was um, saying, uh, I was about to say that there have been some people that have been, uh, some, some individuals and institutions that have been identified to um, come up with an analytical decision framework which will forecast, which will forecast social, economic and climate impact for implementing the selected um, uh, projects that have been picked from the NDC, that's under energy and Apollo. So the, at the moment, we, we have uh, two, two um, components to this framework, which is the first is a strategic level component, and the next is the operational level a component. Uh, Tim, could you go to the next? So the aim of the strategic level is to try and harmonize the policy decision-making structure across all relevant line ministries and the institutions that have been identified to be part of the policy task force are the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, which in our case as a country is the focal point for um, all activities, um, the Ministry of Energy, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Ministry of Transport and uh, Communication, 
a meteorological department specifically for that ministry, Ministry of Water, Sanitation and Environmental Protection, the Ministry of National Development Planning, which houses our Climate um, Change Unit, and the Zambia Institute for Policy Analysis and Research. This will be um, very helpful to give us what the 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 to, to guide us with the policy and also other um, information because they are involved in um, research and go down to um, the grassroots. So they they are quite um, an important uh, part in the, the team. Then we have the operational level um, component, which will constitute the modeling team for this project. And um, the, the, the institutions that have been selected are CIS, where I'm coming from, the Department of Energy, the Forestry Department, Zambia Institute for Policy Analysis and Research, National Remote Sensing Center, University of Zambia, specifically the School of Agriculture Sciences, and um, Zambia Agricultural Research Institute. So the, the, for the two components, the strategic and operational um, teams, institutions and individuals have been identified this far, and um, before the end of this week or by next week, uh, letters will be sent out to officially appoint the people that will start with the work. Um, so um, about a year ago, uh, sometime in May, the, the projects from the NDC were selected. Um, clean energy and a follow at sector level where the, the selected um, projects. Um, I think we could skip to slide number seven. I had talked about that. Um, we could also skip that and go to the energy The, 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 the projects under energy that have been selected. So our baseline setting for um, the rural areas, which are the main targets for the projects that we hope to implement, um, characterized by use of firemass for cooking in the form of firewood and for lighting, there is kerosene and candles. Then we have in isolated places um, the use of petrol and diesel engines for lighting and um, use of equipment like um, hammer mills or water pumping where petrol and diesel engines are utilized. So the project um, involves the implementation of mini hydros, solar PV, wind and biomass as mitigation measures for emission reduction. And the two that we will be using for the baseline setting in this case is the, the LEAP model that um, David had mentioned in his presentation. Um, on slide nine, we have um, what was prepared in our NDC, the, the scenarios from 1994 to um, 2030, our target year, we have emissions from 1994 to our baseline year, which is 2010, and um, the scenario of business as usual up to the target year. We are hoping to reduce emissions of about 38,000 
gigagrams by 2030 with um, with or without um, assistance to achieve our our reduction goal. Um, on slide 10 is a little, a short brief of um, what, what is constituted under the um, conservation agriculture, which is an, a project that was selected under AFOLU. We, under conservation agriculture, the sustainable agriculture through implementation of integrated crop and livestock farming. This has been targeted for three uh, provinces within Zambia. The baseline scenario assumes that if, that there will be continued inefficient use of inorganic fertilizers and the limited use of organic fertilizers in the absence of interventions such as sustainable agriculture through um, integrated crop and livestock management. And under the second project, uh, which is forest enhancement, natural regeneration, the goal for this project is to increase the rate of forest regeneration and promote climate resilience adaptation practices among forest dependent communities in the central province of Zambia. Um, the project objective is to address uh, two challenges of um, red plus implementation for climate mitigation and enhance climate resilience of um, ecosystems and communities through diversification of ecosystem-based livelihoods. That's um, through assisted natural regeneration, agroforestry, and integrated forest management, as well as addressing current and sustainable utilization of biomass for charcoal by enhancing energy and resource use efficiency. So um, there is um, a table showing the emission reduction with the base, what the baseline scenario would look like in 2017, 2020, 2025, and 2030. We have some values there for mitigation emissions and what the total reduction potential would be. Um, Professor Yamba was supposed to make this presentation. He could have explained those figures much more elaborately than I can. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't really explain much about it. But um, as I mentioned, we, would, um, we have plans to use the JDI model here in Zambia again, because um, it's able to assess economic impacts for implementing projects and um, assessing economic impacts has become a requirement for monitoring all um, projects, projects here in, in Zambia. But um, so, so far, only direct impacts are assessed. We have found that the IJDI is, is a model that um, gets to estimate economic impacts before direct, indirect, and um, induced, and also has an output of um, GDP. So we are hoping to use this model for our energy and follow development uh, projects. As David mentioned, the uh, JDI Zambia model was derived from our social accounting data uh, from the International Food Policy Research Institute and also from labor price indices from our Zambia Central Statistics Office and also from the World Bank. 
um, as I mentioned, we have used the JEDI model here in Zambia, but specifically um, with work that we did with the Rural Electrification Authority, which is mandated to provide infrastructure for rural areas. So um, we worked together with them to incorporate the model into three of the projects. They had a grid extension project, a solar mini hydro, and at that time there was um, a proposed mini hydro uh, project, um, which is uh, nearly two years ago. I'm sure they have started working on that. We have not followed up. But the main outputs of our collaboration with them were feeding into the institution's monitoring and evaluation framework. Um, so for, for the current project, the approach that we have taken is um, to work with um, ANREL to develop an enhanced iJDI model that will dynamically link the LEAP to bring in emission outputs to provide a holistic view of social, economic, and climate indicators for actions in our prioritized energy and affordable sectors. So, um, and to do that, um, at first I must mention that we had a meeting yesterday uh, where we had um, selected um, institutions meet and discuss with NREL on the, uh, the way forward. So um, we have agreed with them. Um, we, we have um, data that we, we want to use to, in order to create um, a baseline. And we have um, been discussing on how we'll go about doing this and how much time we'll need. So um, as of yesterday, we have started with looking at the data that we currently have to help us um, establish a baseline and the methodology along the way so that we can computize on the next steps. Um, after we finish that, we will, um, that's for the Zambia team, we'll get back to NREL and see how we can work together in uh, trying to enhance the IJDI. Um, after that, we'll then have to link the um, LEAP model using um, its standard application programming interface um, to, to link it to IJDI. Um, lastly, we have a proposed um, timeframe with activities as we hope to um, achieve our goals at the end of um, this exercise. Um, thank you. Okay. Well, uh, well, thank you very much uh, for for sharing that uh, that background on the project as well as uh, the exciting exciting things to come. Um, I know just speaking from the NREL side, we're uh, we're pretty uh, pretty keen to uh, to be moving forward uh, with this and excited about it. Um, I uh, unfortunately, yeah, while I was up with the screen sh screen sharing, I wasn't able to uh, to be collecting questions here, so. Um, I'll, uh, I'll take a second and look through some of those. I did have a question myself. Um, you had mentioned a couple of questions actually. So you mentioned that right now um, you're only looking at direct impacts um, and not necessarily looking at any of the indirect um, or induced impacts. Um, I'm wondering why why that is or what the what the decision process around that was. Um, I, th I think it was a realization that um, development should not just be focused in one place. There's obviously a ripple action, a, a ripple 
um, action taking place when a project is implemented in one place. Because it, um, over, over time, it has been noticed that you find that you are implementing a project in a certain area. There is always um, uh, like migrations, people coming in, or people going out to do to conduct business, and there hasn't been that um, case of trying to monitor what it is exactly that's um, making them go out there or making people come to that location where the project is being implemented. So this is um, after a realization that we could actually um, track or monitor everything that's happening as a result of a certain reaction. And fortunately for us, we can um, monitor or track all of that using the, the, the JDI model. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that makes sense. Thank you. Um, uh, I do have one more question, and, and please, uh, others on the line, please do, uh, do go ahead and submit your, uh, your questions either through the Q&A box at the bottom um, or through that, uh, that chat box. Um, as well as any of the other uh, panelists on the line, if you have questions, please feel free to uh, to jump them in. I think we'll we'll sort of start transitioning into that uh, question and discussion uh, section uh, right now. Um, but Nancy, one more for you. So you also mentioned um, the process for linking iJedi with Leap. Um, I think uh, in your presentation there, you mentioned that you were going to be using an API um, to to actually sort of create a a firm link between these models. Um, I know, I know you just had the meeting yet to figure that out, but uh, maybe you can provide a little insight on why that process was selected um, or the decision that went around um, how you actually link iJedi um, and Leap. Um, and David uh, or others, please feel free to jump in as well. Um, okay, the, um, the the interest in 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 trying to link these two models is that um, we we realized that with the iJedi, we only had one part of um, the results that we 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 need. We we wanted to have a social and economic impacts all shown, but when you look at the um, when you look at the JDI, only part of those results are shown. So by um, linking the two, we have um, a diverse um, social, economic, and also um, emissions impact when we use the two models together. Um, maybe David could also chip in. I, I I don't really have anything else to add. I think I think that was great. Great. All right. Um, well, we uh, hey, we just got another question here. Um, what activities were included under conservation agriculture, uh, and what were the indicators modeled? I think that's a really good question. Uh, uh, beyond just the you know which activities were. Uh, were included, but uh, even more importantly, this question of, of indicators and how do you select which are the indicators um, that you'll be looking at when you undertake a, a modeling process and analysis process like this. Maybe, uh, maybe Nancy, that's that's one for uh, one for you as well in terms of the uh, the specific indicators you uh, you selected. Okay, um, for conservation. Sorry. Was conservation, conservation agriculture. Um, I, I didn't really do most of the work, but I'm aware that under that there is a minimum tillage um, as, 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 as one of the activities there, encouraging minimum tillage. And there's also um, efficient use of um, fertilizers and um, management of um, agricultural waste. And I think for indicators, 
GHT is, is one of them. GHT is one of them. Um, I, I, I don't quite have the, 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 the other in indicators, sorry. But I can provide them um, later. Okay, thanks. No, no problem. Um, David, we have another uh, question for you. Um, the question was, can you compare, in, in reference to iJedi, can you compare results across countries? Um, I think that's, that's a great question, particularly given sort of the, the goal of the Afolu community of practice and, and, you know, the ultimate goal of the Africa Lens Project as well, to do some cross-country knowledge sharing. Um, but the, is there a way now or are there plans or, or thoughts around uh, doing sort of comparative analysis across countries using iJedi or what would be some of the challenges to that? Well, you certainly can compare one country to another. You would just um, develop a scenario, you know, and two, just develop two separate scenarios and see what the differences are. Um, we always hesitate to do that or, you know, you could compare one technology to another. We hesitate to do that because, it, you know, first of all, you have to really, in that case, I think you would really take caution to make sure that the parameters in the model are correct. Um, but we hesitate to do that because it's, you know, rather than comparing projects on solely economic grounds, we would compare projects based on their suitability in a certain place. Um, so it's not a contest of jobs. It's really what's the best fit for one country or another or one technology or another. Um, I hope that answers that question. I think so. Um, we'll, we'll find out. Um, I, uh, it's certainly, certainly a tricky question. Um, to get at, and I think one that we're all struggling with, and hopefully that we can uh, can start thinking through together as a as a community um, through the Afolu Cop here. Right. Um, and if I may add, uh, you know, there are a lot of nuances to each project that iJedi does not capture. You know, uh, when we were talking to C's yesterday, one of the things that came up was, or was it C's or another project? I don't know. I was on the phone all day yesterday. Um, but one of the things that came up was uh, social indicators. Actually, on two different calls, this came up um, was social indicators uh, like access to energy or poverty reduction, things like that, that iJedi does not capture. And so I would be careful um, to just think about a project in terms of jobs, earnings, GDP, and output. Okay. That's, uh... So good to know. Um, uh, another another question here, but first um, uh, we're going to try to uh, to also get some feedback from from you all, from our attendees. Um, we'd be curious to know, um, you know, if some of you have experience in your countries um, undertaking similar sort of socioeconomic analyses. If you're using uh, similar tools, or maybe even iJedi. Um, as well as uh, you know, sort of specific challenges you might be encountering with this sort, this sort of uh, socioeconomic uh, modeling as part of LEDs planning. Um, I know you can't necessarily uh, just jump in and, and speak up, but uh, if there's anybody who would like to share um, some of their own experiences, please let us know through the chat box, and we can uh, can give you a minute or two to uh, to share your experience as well. Um, while you all think about that. Um, we had a question going back to the beginning where I was uh, mentioning the remote expert assistance for LEDs, the real program, um, from a colleague in the South Sudan who actually received some assistance through real um, previously, uh, who was curious to know if it's possible for, um, for real, for the Africa LEDs partnership and the LEDs global partnership uh, to support a country such as South Sudan uh, to review national development plans um, so that all their plans um, can really be consistent with and tied to their NDCs um, and overall climactic uh, uh, climate change framework. And the answer to that is, is definitely yes. Um, through that real service, um, looking at development plans, reviewing development plans, reviewing climate plans, and ensuring that they're um, consistent with one another is certainly something that 
um, that the real service can um, can touch on. So, um, Emmanuel, thank you for uh, for sharing that and for uh, for sharing your experience with the real uh, the real service. And uh, indeed, we uh, we can really touch on a, a broad range of lead planning and analysis processes through that service. Um, it doesn't look like there's a there's anybody who's uh, who's raised a hand or uh, or asked a, asked about um, sharing their their experiences. So uh, maybe we can can sort of collect some of that remotely afterwards. If anybody is keen to share their own experiences with um, with socioeconomic modeling, we'd be keen to get that. Um, I'd like to go back to the question that we started earlier, then David, um, on data and the importance of getting. Um, data. Could you share a little bit about, uh, for those out there who would be interested in using I Bet I, um, sort of what the process is for getting getting started in terms of what data do you need, how do you go about collecting this data, um, and how could they get started if they wanted to develop their own um, in-country I Jet I uh, approach? Are you, talking, are you talking about the custom region? Yes. Okay. So what, so what you know, what data would they have to? What would folks have to um, start looking for if they? to come to us with sort of a, a proposal to, uh, to build out iJedi. So there are two basic data sources, um, two basic data sets that you have to have. One is called uh, so social accounting data. Um, and that is that input output matrix that I was talking about. Um, you can get these from another, a number of sources. Um, the one in, um, you know, the OECD has a lot, but that's primarily OECD countries, and then they ha have a bunch of other ones in there. Um, but it's certainly not uh, complete. Uh, IFPRI has a few of them. Um, the Asian Development Bank has uh, several of them. Um, and then uh, the KGM that I mentioned that we use for Kenya has quite a few. Um, and uh, you would have to contact them though about uh, using it. Sometimes you have to pay for it, sometimes you don't. I think it works, um, I, I think a lot of times you get it for free though. Um, and then you have to get average um, earnings per industry that's in the model. So you have to match up those industries for earnings to the industries that are in that uh, social accounting or input output data. Um, depending on what kind of data you get, you may have to do a little bit of math. Um, there is um, the, the, the algebra is in the iJedi user guide. Um, for that, it just depends on what kind of data you can get. Sometimes you get the social accounting table. Sometimes you get what's called the total requirements matrix. If you get total requirements, you don't have to do the math. If you get the social accounting table, you do. Um, again, that's in the iJedi user guide, or um, you could probably contact us for some technical support and we may be able to um, walk you through how to, how to put that in the model. Um, if you open the model, you can see several custom region tabs. Um, we'll be updating the model to include the template for the Asian Development Bank. Right now it's not in there, um, but we will be providing that update soon. Um, but you can see the template of everything that you have to enter in there. Um, so it is something that can be a little bit complicated. Maybe it's not. I don't know. It just depends on what data are available. Okay, great. Um, thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, that guy. Um, we uh, we only have about minutes here um, and I uh, we've uh, we've touched on pretty much all the questions that have come in um, we have some other questions we'd be keen to get feedback from from you all uh, within the community on um, so maybe we can we can try and share some of these questions afterwards uh, and if you have thoughts or feedback you'd like to share with us via email um, or, or try to um, you know arrange another exchange like this we would uh, we would certainly be happy to um, but we're keen to hear from from all of you about your experiences with this this type of modeling, um, your experiences uh, with with trying to get this data, um, and some of the challenges you've encountered and, and uh, approaches you've taken to overcome some of those challenges. Um, but with that, um, I'd like to uh, to go ahead and thank uh, both David and Nancy for uh, for sharing their uh, 
their experiences with iJedi. Um, and at this point, I think I'll hand it back to our colleagues at uh, the Africa-led partnership um, to, uh, to, uh, to wrap things up and, and, and close us up. But uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Tim, and thank you to all the presenters for doing um, your parts on the webinar. Um, we'd like to thank all the attendees for joining us today. Um, we'd just like to remind you that this, this webinar has been recorded and the um, copies of the presentations, the recording, and the list of Q&As will be shared with all the attendees post-webinar. So with that, um, I'd like to close the session and uh, thank you once again for joining us and we hope that you can join us for our next webinar um, that we'll be hosting. Um, we will send out a communication when that will take place. So thank you once again and goodbye. <laughs>